And now, as they say, for my final act. From Q just orchestrating the entire show to entirely being set in a virtual reality room, Star Trek Picard has been a huge source of debate. But how long is it going to last? They can only keep calling back Patrick Stewart to save their rear ends for so long. Even he has to retire at some point. But now it's been confirmed that he too will finally part ways with the franchise for good, as season 3 is going to be the last. The spin-off show has gotten rave reviews, much better than anything else the franchise has to offer as of late. Seven of Nine came on Twitter from her official account as Jerry Ryan and confirmed that the series was done filming completely. So just like, it's all over. And what an amazing journey it was. Fans obviously couldn't handle the news and begged her for more information in the comments. One fan asked if any future season without Jean-Luc would be made, but Jerry said that it was always meant to be a three-season thing. This came as a huge blow to me. Watching the captain up and about again literally made me feel like I was a child again. Watching Picard save the world from annihilation once again. Stand down. Stand down. That's an order. But all good things must end, and we're going to have to say goodbye. But don't be too upset just yet, because this comes with a silver lining. The ending of Picard means that the studios will now once again be focusing on the overall image of the franchise, and that most definitely means new shows and movies for the entire year. The Trekkie universe has been alive for around 55 years, so thinking that it was about to die off soon isn't the best idea. It keeps bringing out fresh new ideas and new releases are always exciting, and the popularity and fandom of the old shows are almost impossible to kill, almost like a tough Klingon. After a lot of things went wrong, the entire franchise was rebooted for the big screens by J.J. Abrams, and he managed to make some of the most solid Star Trek entries ever. So good that even now the franchise is trying to replicate that style, but they definitely have more properties than they can handle. Around 100 different shows, and each with its own section of the fan base. But this makes sure that you can almost always find something that's up your alley. And after Picard finishes, we'll get a load of new material like season five of Star Trek Discovery. Everybody has been waiting a long time. What are you doing here, Snakehead? Trying to save the universe? We can keep fighting, or we can work together. Stop what's coming for us. It seemed as though the show had died down in between, but the hype is back again, and the new season is going to be in the main storyline that Star Trek TV shows will follow. Even though it had a lot of twists and turns, the first couple of seasons received the most mixed reviews ever, and fans couldn't decide whether they loved it or hated it. It wasn't consistent, and the plot just had too many holes, but sometimes it managed to produce something that would bring a nostalgic tear to my eye, like the magic to make the sanest man go mad episode. What a classic. But the writers just couldn't figure out what more to do after season two, because everyone was sick and tired of everything happening just a few years after the original series. So for season three, they made a huge time jump of almost 900 years. And honestly, the change could be felt from the first episode, and it was much appreciated by everyone. Season three had a completely new time period, and so everyone got on their knees and thanked Paramount Plus. And without a doubt, that turned the show into one of the strongest installments of Star Trek ever made. To be fearful of loss. Fearful of loss? You are out of line. We cannot allow it to make us weep. An even better contender for leading the universe after Picard retires is, of course, Star Trek Lower Decks. It's not exactly as serious as you might remember the captain being. Are you pretending to do a captain's log? <laughs> We're all supposed to keep logs. Okay, let me listen to it. No, go away. Leave <laughs> me alone. I can't believe you're no, wasting no. your shore leave on this. The animated show draws a lot of references from other comedy shows on Adult Swim, like South Park, Family Guy, and Rick and Morty. Unlike the glamorous images we've been seeing, the upper decks, like the bridge and holodeck, lower decks focuses on more of the dumb and disgusting jobs that keep their starships floating, like cleaning the 1,000 toilets on the ship and mopping the floors that are in total as huge as a city. But it's able to strike a very serious and concerned tone about this. The cartoon comedy show was geared for a grown-up performance, but at the same time, the actors have fun and just goof around without needing to follow protocols. 
Star Trek Strange New Worlds is also getting a second season. Anson Mount as Christopher Pike, Ethan Peck as Spock, and Rebecca Romaine as Number One. And a redesigned spaceship Enterprise was presented in Star Trek Discovery, two years before the corridors were dripping with James Kirk's testosterone. Even those who were not fans of Star Trek Discovery's main cast were won over by the returning characters. And discussion of a spin-off started almost immediately after Michael Burnham traveled 900 years in the future. I mean, it was kinda inevitable. It was just such a good plot point. Season 2 of Star Trek Strange New Worlds will premiere sometime in late 2023, and fans of the original shows, the ones in the same timeline and in episodic style, will be delighted to hear that the same adventurous and nostalgic format is going to be returning. That's literally all anyone wanted, and it's a surprise it took them this long to understand. A more mysterious addition to the Star Trek roster is going to be Section 31. This Star Trek Discovery spinoff has been quietly lurking in the background, and it gave characters like Burnham and Picard the opportunity to grab the spotlight. That's pretty much what Section 31 did itself too, if you remember. But according to all accounts, the Section 31 spinoff from Alex Kurtzman will only happen if the stars align just right. It'll have Michelle Yeoh's Mira Giorgio and Shazad Latif's Ash Tyler. Last time, Tyler was given command of Starfleet's undercover unit after the previous commander was assimilated by a murderous AI program that hated humanity. Someone who is manipulating the fates of entire species. A time-traveling being pursuing its own agenda? And what happens when that technology is turned against us? The Prime and Mirror Reality splitting apart prevented Giorgio from being able to remain in the future. But the Guardian of Forever finally sent Giorgio back, setting up her Section 31 return. Who are you? Really? Really? I am the Guardian of Forever. Production hasn't even started yet, but rest assured, it's happening. The most interesting take on the universe has to be with Starfleet Academy. The television series was first revealed in 2018 and is another Star Trek project that is hush-hush and only rumored until now. It's going to be something like Gossip Girl and Runaways, especially since its directors are working on the show. It'll follow a teenage story in the world of Star Trek, but since it was announced, there hasn't been a single word leaked on it. Even though Alex Alex Kurtzman had confirmed all the way back in 2021 that it was happening. This new perspective on Starfleet would probably be really cool to see, and I wonder what Earth looks like now in that universe. But the most interesting addition to this list would have to be the Worf comedy show. You heard that right. It would be a comedy show based on Worf. Graham Wagner initially pitched it to the studios, and they found it so funny and grand that they immediately greenlit it. But they're now saying that it could be a bit too detached from the Trekverse, and fans might not accept it. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what we have in store for us. Well, that was it for what's next for Star Trek after Picard is finished. 